when you go for an interview definitely people will ask what are all things you know about the oracle so how do you explain that so when you take daily full database backup don't you think that it will consume a lot of storage i want to do the restoration what are all things you will take care hi everyone my name is ankush and welcome back to learn about technologies youtube channel so this is our first episode of oracle dba mock interview so along with me aaj uh, rohan hai he is having around 7 years of experience with the it industry currently he is working as a sql dba but he want to switch his career from sql dba to oracle dba and as we know that if you see the current trend um a dba is not just about the one technology you should have a flavor of multiple databases so along with the sql dba he also want to start and he want to know more about the oracle dba so recently he got trained or the training is still going on but we just thought like we will try to understand how much he is comfortable with oracle dba concept so welcome rohan thank you so much sir so let's start with the introduction part because when you go for an interview definitely people will ask about tell me about yourself yes and your roles and responsibility so can you please brief about that sure sure yeah so my name is rohan and i have completed my education from pune university so i have completed my engineering and uh, after that i started working as a sql dba in a small company uh, so i worked as a junior dba there for 3 uh, plus years and then i got an opportunity to work with uh, various mncs such as zensar then lnt infotech and i also uh, worked with a one product based company it was in us so there i was working as a sql database i configured various disaster recovery solutions then day to day activities such as user management security implementing various uh, disaster recovery solutions such as uh, log shipping mirroring replication and always on uh, so in sql we have always on and in oracle we have rack mm. so i have worked on uh, that we use various software such as vmware here i also got exposure on oracle virtual box uh, so i have that experience of uh, disaster recovery uh, like making your databases highly available then i also worked on performance tuning part as you know uh sir that uh, performance tuning is like even if you have experience of 10 plus years you cannot be sure of performance tuning like that is the exact solution to that problem so as you go on working as you start working you get to know various things in performance tuning like uh checking for blocking deadlocks then checking for indexing fragmentation part statistics are updated or not mm -hmm. and then checking for disk io so uh, yeah i've worked on this part as well and currently i'm working as a lead dba uh with a company in pune so we are having four members in our team and we are supporting in us shift timing as well uh so we are working in healthcare domain uh in us and uh, yeah so i'm having four members and we are working 24 by 7 in shifts uh so yeah uh, currently we are having various sql production servers we are checking for uh, job monitoring as well as providing support deployment and snowflake a little bit of snowflake as well so that is my overall experience so you do not have any other databases apart from sql or it just a sql only uh we have sql databases and snowflake uh Achha. yeah so you do not have oracle there oh, no no we don't have oracle at all so how like when we like you know about the oracle now and you know about the sql also yes so how do you rate like you know which one is but much better or like when in when it comes for the working part Uh, yeah yeah so as far as uh, the end user is concerned mm -hmm. sql is very easy to work with it is as you know it has graphical user, user interface, interface mostly so you working with that it is very easy to manage but uh, as i have worked uh, as i have uh, learned oracle in the past few weeks so i would say that oracle has much more functionality as compared to sql uh, let me give an example in sql we have a database known as master database that is uh, a separate database that is used as a startup parameter hmm. but in oracle we have sp file and we can modify that sp file correct but i don't see that option in sql and also like uh, we just uh, learnt about the new topic of asm hmm. so that topic is completely new to me Achoo. like in sql we don't have that utility mm -hmm. at all and also uh, taking backups and via R, via rman taking logical backups that is also very easy in oracle Achha. but in sql we don't have rman backups we have to configure them by using scripts only so like when you go for an interview definitely people will ask like uh, what are all things you know about the oracle yes. so how do you explain that so yeah so my strategy for interview is that i will say that uh, my total experience is 7 years but i have been also working in oracle as three for the last 2 to 3 years 
and uh, in oracle i have learned about user management listener configuration of listener then uh, configuration of table spaces checking for table uh, spaces then working with armen and then working with uh, uh, asm hmm. uh, installation of oracle servers so these are the things that i'll uh, talk about and also i'll uh, mention about oracle architecture because it's a huge topic so yeah i'll mention that as well coming to the backup part like um, let's say can you tell me about the strategy that you have configured in your environment especially for the oracle yeah sure so uh, in our uh, company we have multiple backup strategies it depends on uh, what your database is being used for uh, but mostly if uh, let me tell you about the critical backup strategies uh, one very critical database uh, for that we have a uh, daily full backup strategy and then we uh, take archive log backups as they full and we also have differential backups we take differential backup every 6 hours so when you take daily full database backup don't you think that it will consume lot of storage yes yes that's definitely a issue but uh, yeah that's as it's a critical database we uh, keep full backup of that daily and that backups run on midnight uh, for other databases we also have weekly backup strategy wherein we take uh, full backup every sunday and then we take differential backup every day and uh, we also take the log backups arc log backups yes so we are your backups are going to the tape or it is going to the disk uh, they uh, they go to a sans server SAN separately server. yeah acha uh, coming to the uh, like your monitoring part and all like how do you get the tickets uh, can you tell me about your the ticket uh, the like how the flow is going on yeah yeah sure so uh, i'm assuming that you are asking about day to day activities Correct. of hmm. okay so uh, we have a ticketing tool known as service now okay. and from there we get uh, various requests sometimes you know uh, when we are working with us client you don't get request day to day basis they will just send a ping on uh, your microsoft teams or just via email so we, in that case we raise our own request we assign them to ourselves and then we take care of the activities typically we receive activities such as creation of user granting access to a user configuration of a new server commissioning a new server or migration or upgradation patching i have done activities such as patching and upgradation taking backups taking ad hoc backup request as you know we already have a backup strategy but if a user wants to uh, maintain an ad hoc backup of uh, or take a backup of an object then we also do that so will you take uh, logical backup or physical backup mostly Uh, it depends on the user request hmm. if user wants to take backup of the whole database then we'll go to armen and we'll take a complete backup of the database if the user says that hey i just want to backup this one particular table then we'll go for xpdp that is export data pump utility in oracle can you tell me the steps uh, let's say um, i want to do the restoration okay yes like what all things you will take care so uh, before uh, restoration of let us say a table then i'll make sure that i have enough space hmm. i'll make sure that i have that backup of that table and also yeah that's the main thing i'll check yeah so any backup which is taken by expdp that you will import it by using impdp right yes import data pump utility okay what about the let's take an example of patching okay yeah. you discuss about the patching i want to apply the patch tell me the step by steps from the beginning yeah. till end sure so in my experience of 2 to 3 years i've uh, applied patch to oracle multiple times hmm. and uh, every quarterly oracle releases various patches uh, there are three types of patches such as psu patch cpu patch and a uh, one off patch one off patch that is a, a hot fix like sometimes hmm. if only one issue is needs to fix then we apply that patch but mostly in my company we apply patch every 6 months hmm. so to so before we apply patch there are many things that we need to check first we need to check if there are any invalid objects are there any conflicts uh, when applying the patch and then we need to also check the version of o patch hmm. so o patch is the utility given by oracle uh, that is used to apply a patch so we need to check the version is compatible with the existing patch that is given and if not then we need to upgrade the o patch and then we and one more thing uh, we need to do is we need to check the readme.html file hmm. that comes with the patch so in the readme.html itself it is given a lot of prerequisites then post patch applications everything is given is it a online activity or offline activity oh patching is definitely an offline activity so let's say while applying the patch you got some invalid objects yes so what you will do uh, i will record those objects i will take that count and i'll make sure that after patch the count remains same how it will be done uh, there's a script to that to check the invalid object uh, select something i don't remember the exact uh, so if yeah. you want to recompile it for that you have utlrp.sql script yes, there yes which is available under a location called oracle home rdbms admin 
Yes. Okay. Yes, so sure. that part uh, you need to take care. Did you like have you got a chance to do any upgradation? Oh yes, I've done upgradation from 12C to 19C. Mm -hmm. So even uh, we talk about upgrade. Uh, let us say I want to upgrade from two or three weeks from now. So we should first check if the upgrade is compatible with the application. We need to inform the application owner as well. Then we need to check with the Linux team as well whether this applic uh, whether after up, uh, upgrading from let us say from 12C to 19C the upgrade is compatible with the OS. Mm. Uh, so these are the things that we need to contact them and we need to have a discussion. Uh, multiple teams come together and we have a meeting with them. Uh, so yeah, uh, when you apply a patch, uh, uh, when you are going to upgrade, you need to check with Oracle support as well whether this is a direct, uh, upgrade. direct upgrade or not. Mm. So, so sometimes, for example, if I have 10 Oracle 10, then it cannot directly uh, upgrade to 19C. I mm. have to go to 12C and from 12C I can upgrade. So these are some of the prerequisites that we need to check. Then we need to check the conflicts again. Uh, and again, we need to, uh, so I can explain all the uh, steps that I have done in upgradation if you give me two or five minutes. Okay, oh, that's fine. So yeah. um, these prerequisites play a very, very important role whenever you are trying to upgrade, upgrade. The things. Yes. Um, but one more thing I want to highlight, like before you do the upgrade, na, also take the backup of your Oracle softwares yes. and your inventory file location. Because sometimes it may get corrupted also. Yes. Uh, so bet better you have a backup available of it. Yes. Uh, coming to the user management, uh, like what is the version you people are using right now? Right now we are uh, like we are having 70 around production servers and mostly they are on 19C. 19C. Yes. So let's say I want to create a user. What are all basic things which you require to create a user? Uh, so uh, as... Uh, as I told you, like we are using 19C, it has a multi-tenant architecture. So uh, there are two types of user over there. Uh, we have a common user and a local user. So when you create a common user, it is going to be created on the container database and all the PDBs under it. So yeah, first you need to know about common user and the local user. If you create a local user, directly it is going to be created on that one PDB only, that is that pluggable database. So whenever you want to create a common user, Usually it is done for uh, the system sys level admin if you want to give access of that type of stuff. Uh, you just need to add C hash hash, like just create user C hash hash. Let us say I'm creating a user U1, C hash hash U1 and identified by U1. That's U1 is my password. So what are the things required to create a user? Like for create a user, like you have given username, password, yes, what password. else? Default table uh, space. Yeah, default table space and temp table space. Okay, so I'm sorry, I didn't understood that question. Mm -hmm. So whenever you create, uh, whenever you're installing uh, Oracle database, what happens in the background? Five table spaces are created automatically. Mm -hmm. That is sys, sysox, undo, and users and temp. So whenever I'm creating any user, these three things are required. That is username, password, and the uh, table spaces. That default is default table space and permanent temp table space. Uh, temp table space. Yes. And you require a profile also. Yes, a profile. That is a security profile. And by default, we use default only. So let's say the users are saying that we are not able to connect to the database. All the users. None of the user is able to connect to the database. Okay. Then what you'll do? I will first check if, my, uh, see, if all the users are not able to connect, then it might be an issue from Oracle side. So I'll check uh, if my listener is up and running and mm. if my service is started. If my database is running or not. And let's consider only one user is saying that I'm not able to connect. Uh, if all other users are able to connect and if only one is not able to connect, then it is a problem from user account. I'll check if his, his uh, password is working or not. Is uh, his account uh, open? I mean, his status is lock on. Or on. Yeah, open. it is locked or not. So these are the things I'll check. He may not have access uh, permissions like yes. grand create sessions. Maybe he do not have access. Yes, yes. You do not have access to create a session itself. That is the reason he may not be able to connect. Definitely. So in that case, I'll ask that user for a screenshot. In the error message, I'll check what is the exact error message. Sometimes, you know, you, you can block the IP also. Like let's say some client is coming from particular IP. Or if you want to block that, that is also possible. Okay. Maybe we have done such type of uh, configuration. Okay. So okay. it is possible. Okay. Just keep it in your mind. Okay. Uh, coming to the table space. Let's take an example. I got some table space issue. Okay. What you'll do? So, uh, as you know, table space is a logical thing. And inside uh, a table space, I can add multiple data files. So, I can add 1022, uh, that is 1000 plus data files can be added. And it depends on the size of data block. But assuming the default is 8 KB. And if that is the case, then maximum uh, space will be 32 GB. 
So if my table space run out of, if my table spaces are going to run out of space, what I'll do is I'll uh, check a couple of things. I'll check if auto extend is on or not. I'll add a new data file so that that data file will be used for further data insert. And uh, I'll also check, uh, I'll resize the data files. Auto extend? Yeah, I'll check if auto extend auto is extend on. Is on. Yeah. Like what is the maximum size of data file you say? Uh, 32 GB. And on which factor it is depending on? It depends on data DB block size. If my default DB is block, it, that is 8132 KB, uh, 8 KBs. If that is there, then maximum size will be 32. And there is also one type of uh, table space, uh, data file that is big data file, hmm. big table space that we can configure. That is done very rarely if my database is used for a lot of uh, inserts. Uh, the maximum size is 32 uh, terabytes and we can only add one data file in that table space. So can you tell me some challenges that you faced in your real-time production environment or did you get a chance to resolve any critical ticket? Oh yes, multiple times. As I told you about my uh, SQL experience, I have uh, worked on various uh, high-level critical tickets mm -hmm. and especially uh, working with uh, uh, when your uh, when your database is configured in disaster recovery setup, then it's very uh, important to work on those. Can you such share as, me any experience? Yeah, yeah. Such as uh, if a database is configured in uh, rack setup, it goes out of sync. Hmm. Your secondary database is not coming up or your primary goes down in some cases, then auto failover happens. Mm -hmm. So those are, those are the scenarios. And we also had one very important activity every weekend we used to do. We used to reboot the production servers. So what? happen in one act and that activity the timeline for that was only 30 minutes mm -hmm. and we used to uh, reboot 50 plus production servers in that activity every weekend and every day uh, every day we used to do four and weekend we'll, we used to reboot all so on one particular moment we rebooted one server but it never came back up okay it came back after uh, like four times we had to do a hard reboot like the uh vm uh, guy they had to contact the data center and hmm. then from data center they literally switched it off and on okay by using a switch okay so that's it for the day okay, okay. so again guys uh, you have understood like a lot of things which are given by rohan so this is just a mock interview uh, when you go for an actual interview you will see a lot of different type of scenarios will be there okay so we just thought like, you know, just have a refresh about the concept that we take in the class. So thank you so much for listening us. And again, we will continue this series. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we are going to upload more and more videos based on the Oracle TBA.